live. Hey, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are in the world. It's uh, Gareth here with uh, live on the High Blood Pressure Support Group. And I am so happy today because I've got two very special guests for the first time that we've uh, that we'll be doing. We've done a, a live uh, recording, a, a live interview. So a Facebook live. But actually, this interview is with three of us. So it's great. And uh, I'll be speaking to two doctors, two doctors who have set off on, a, on a, I think, which will be an incredible journey and something really, really unique. And many, many of the people who are part of this, uh, this group will enjoy the subject we're going to be talking about and, and get to listen to the experience of, of these two doctors. So I'm going to be talking to Dr. Jean Schumacher, who uh, Jean has been as a doctorate in science. And education has taught chemistry, biology, and environmental science for get this more than 35 years. So that I couldn't believe that, Gene. When I saw you there, I thought it must be a mistake, it must be 25, surely. And uh, Dr. Shapiro, uh, board certified OBGYN with 26 years practicing uh, a clinical practice in this area. So, welcome to you both, ladies. Where am I speaking to you today? I'm in California. Northern California. I'm Deborah Shapiro. Okay. Okay. And I am Jean Schumacher, and I am in Westchester, New York, in the U.S. Well, this just shows how cool the internet is, isn't it? That we can have this conversation uh, here. Correct. So, can I ask you uh, both first, Deborah? How did you get into what you were what you were doing? How did you get into the profession of o OBGYN? Uh, OBGYN is the most wonderful profession because you get to be with women at the time that they're giving birth, which is the most, the most incredible high that a person can have to be, to be present with, with when a woman is giving birth. And once you have that experience, which I did in medical school, I knew that that was the life for me. In addition, you get to do surgery and you save lives, you can actually do life-saving surgery. So that's quite, a, that's quite a thrill as well and very important work. You know, you have someone with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. And this is probably one of the most important things is you get to take care of women through all the stages of their life. So you see women when they're first 13 or four, you know, they're 14, 15, and they first need to talk about sexually transmitted diseases or, 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 uh, or birth control or, or, or problems with their, with their menses. And then you see them through their, through their relationships and having babies and then into menopause and beyond and when they're losing parents and they're taking, letting their kids out. So it's, it's really, it's primary care, it's surgery and it's delivering babies. So if you can stay up all night and you don't care about sleeping, it's the perfect specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. And uh, Dr. Schumacher, how, how about yourself? Well, my journey started with a trip to the emergency room. And, you know, in, in terms of changing my health and, you know, I had been teaching for a long, long time, but also too, I, you know, I was starting to see changes in the children, you know, from the time when I was a kid going to school, you know, you never saw anybody with autism. I didn't, not in growing up where I lived I never saw it. I didn't see somebody with autism until like the 1990s. And now it's one out of 68 children I have are, are designated autistic. So I'm seeing changes in the children after 35 years in the classroom, and I've seen them dealing with a lot of health issues that they shouldn't be, and also having issues with cognitive, you know, learning development. But you know, for me personally, my trip, you know, started with a trip to the emergency room, and you know, they never figured out what I had, and I really don't care. But I was in there for a week, and I was never so sick. You know, I had a very, very high, high, deadly high fever. My blood pressure was like 250 over 150. So those of us in the group know that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. So uh, the woman who was taking care of me was not only a medical doctor, but she was a nutritionist as well. So she started me on this journey and I haven't looked back. And you know, the, the kids that I have helped along this path to change to this lifestyle, to a whole food plant-based lifestyle, I've seen such amazing changes in them and their performance, not just you know, in terms of athleticism, but also in terms of intellectually. So I think, you know, when I connected with Dr. Shapiro, you know, it was kind of a match made in heaven. You know, she's catching them, you know, as they're coming out of the chute and I'm seeing them in the classroom. And so we want to create uh, healthy babies and healthy, healthy women. So. So you, uh, you both, uh, between you, you came up with the, uh, the pregnancy advantage. Yes. So initially, why would, why would someone in um, a situation of either 
uh, just about to get pregnant or would like to get pregnant, why, why would they want to come and uh, be interested in what you're doing? Well, I'll jump in on that one. <laughs> then you can jump in, Deborah, afterward, because we're like, ah, we, you know, we're so excited about this because we want to help your body get pregnant ready from, you know, because they don't call it labor for nothing. I mean, I've given birth to two children. But yeah, I know. They, they don't call it labor for nothing. And so we want to get your bodies pregnant ready. So before you're even thinking about conceiving, we want to get rid of the toxins. We want to change you over to the best nutrients that you could possibly get for your children. And we want to deal with some of the major health issues like blood pressure, high blood pressure before you get pregnant, because down the road that can cause some major issues as you're giving birth, either before you get pregnant, giving birth, you know, getting while you're during your pregnancy or after pregnancy, it can cause some major health issues. So we want to help to address some of these chronic issues. And we want to do that and, and get your body ready so that when you want to lower shields, shields down, you know, mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to conceive without question easily. Okay. And Dr. Shapiro, yes. Yes. So I, I wanted to say that what first inspired me to create this program and with Jean a little bit late when I, when I met her, it really, it really was fertilized. But when I first had the germ <laughs> of an idea, it, it was because of two things. One, I was seeing in my practice and I was at that time I was at, at Kaiser. Um, I was seeing patients just getting heavier and heavier and on more and more medications. I started to see that if, you, if a woman got to be 50 years old, it was unlikely that she was not on at least five different medications. You know, blood pressure, high cholesterol, wow. diabetes, you know, usually reflux, you know, it was just a constipation. But it was, it was, it was so sad. And then in, in 2016, there was an article that came out in a kind of a throwaway journal called Contemporary OBGYN. But it was, you know, one of these journals. It's not the American Journal of OBGYN. It was just Contemporary OBGYN. But you can find it online. And it's Maternal Obesity and the Fetal Brain. And I read that article then. And I never forget it, it, forgot it. It really stuck with me that, that the body that the baby develops in, inside of, that body affects how that baby is going to develop. It affects fetal programming, how the brain develops. And you know, just leading on to what, what, what happens with Gene is seeing, maternal obesity will lead to more, auto, more um, autism spectrum disorder. And, a lower IQ even. And, and, and then there, went, there was another piece that I learned a little bit later, but as I had to present a, a paper, uh, a PowerPoint at Genentech where I was working on emotional and physical emotional preparedness for pregnancy. And I started to do some research about endocrine disrupting chemicals and learning about endocrine disrupting chemicals and the fetal brain. And you can look that up too. There's an amazing article by this Dr. Braun endocrine disrupting chemicals which are all around us because we basically live in this toxic soup this has been a horrible experiment it's gone awry since mm -hmm. about 1950 right after world war ii where we're just living covered with and ingesting so many toxic materials that have effects on our fertility that have effects on our genome that have effects on our iq on our health later on putting it all together and i ran i met gene and we decided that we could have an impact I've been a coach for a few years also, a health coach, getting people off of their medications and, and reversing disease like diabetes and hypertension, just like you. But, but it, it clicked that reaching people when they're 40 and 50 and 60 is great, but to have the most impact on the world, we need to reach women before they conceive. Heart disease starts in the womb and, and, and we need a smarter and a healthier we need smarter and healthier generations to come if we're going to tackle all the problems that are going to be facing the earth. So we can't afford, we have no time to lose. Women cannot be obese and eating excessively and eating a high meat diet also for the environment. It's not possible to think that the next generation of people can, can eat this the way we've been eating. And I grew up on spam and bologna and all that stuff. It's not possible for the next generation to do that. It's not sustainable. Mm. So for all these reasons, we need to be healthier, we need to be smarter, and we need to protect the earth if we're going to survive. So we have to reach women before they conceive. Right. Okay. Well, that tells me absolutely why. You, and it's such a great idea. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. When, you, when in the introduction there, Dr. Schumacher, you talked about 
the, the children in school being different sizes. I actually got a photograph sent to me today, taken of my first, just as I was going on my very first trip abroad from school when I was 10, which was 50 years ago. And I noticed, I looked at that you know, group of 30 or so children, not one child there you would say was overweight. Right. You, I don't know you could do that. Could you do that in America in a class of 10 year olds these days? No, you're not gonna see that. Not at all. You're going to see like at least half, if not more. And it's crazy. You know, the obesity epidemic has gotten absolutely incredible because it is, it is, it's not our fault, but it is our responsibility because the food industry has hijacked our brains. And mm-hmm. so without question, it hits us in the pleasure trap, you know, and so we're addicted to this, this high concentrated food, high caloric density, that just you know and it's chasing the dragon you know after the first bite you're constantly trying to get that same high as you got from eating the first bite of whatever it was so okay so let's if i can ask you still then let's get specific about blood pressure because like we say most people on this uh, site have that as an issue or a concern of either themselves or or one of their family members what's so important about uh, having correct blood pressure when you're pregnant first the little story about me that i as a busy OBGYN, I remember at night, and I was still eating regular diet, at night on labor and delivery, I would check my blood pressure sometimes, and it was as high as 150 over 895. And I just thought, well, I'm getting a little older, you know, I was 50, so, so I didn't, I, I wasn't really aware, actually, even for myself. You know, there's so much denial, right? I don't know if you've ever encountered denial, but I was definitely in denial. But the amazing thing is, once I went on a plant based diet, without even thinking about my blood pressure or anything, it went down to 110 over 60. And mm-hmm. I have to worry about passing out when I go in the hot tub. <laughs> but it was really getting off of the oils that made a difference for me. That was when the weight came off, that was when the cholesterol came down, and that was when the blood pressure really came down. So, well, just with a little background about some changes that have happened in the criteria for the diagnosis of high blood pressure. They've recently been adopted by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. So we used to think maybe you know, 130 over 80 was, was, was considered hypertension. Now they're, they're saying that, a, or maybe that was normal, but now elevated normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. So even they consider 120 to 129 elevated blood pressure. And stage one hypertension is 130 to 139 oh. over 80 to 89. And stage two is over 140 over 90. So what this means is that actually more and more patients could be, it could be suggested that they even go on medication. Mm -hmm. Some of those medications are not safe in pregnancy and can affect sperm and can affect fertility and in men, but also some are definitely not safe in pregnancy as well. So the reason that hypertension is so important in pregnancy is that it can affect the growth of the fetus and it can develop into something called preeclampsia. I'm sure most women are, are familiar with preeclampsia or when people have a seizure, it's, it's called an eclamptic seizure. But preeclampsia is when you have high blood pressure with swelling of your hands and, of your hands and face, not just your feet because everyone has swelling of their feet, but hands and face. And also you spill protein in your urine. And preeclampsia can become even more like severe preeclampsia, turn into something called HELP syndrome, H-E-L-L-P, which stands for hypertension, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. And that is so dangerous and requires delivery. If you develop health syndrome, it can lead to maternal death, hemorrhage, blindness I've seen, and abruption and fetal death. So managing your blood pressure and reversing your hypertension before you get pregnant and knowing how to eat so that you do not develop hypertension is really ideal borderline high blood pressure because even though it drops a little in the, the early part of the second trimester it starts to go up in the third trimester second later in the second and the third trimester okay and dr schumacher then what what are the causes of blood pressure there where it come, when it comes to food you mentioned oil oh. but there are other, there are other things as well well let's just i mean animal products one i mean we're not really designed to eat animals we're just not And our body has, I wouldn't say adapted, we've done the best we possibly can. And this is why we're seeing dis-ease, dis meaning against from Latin, at ease, 
being against at ease with our body. And this is what's happening is our body is showing us signs and symptoms. And one of the things is symptoms is high blood pressure. And so there's a lot of different reasons why there could be high blood pressure, you know, within a person. And especially when you're going to get pregnant, you don't want to have this issue. So hopefully we can help address this issue before you get pregnant. And a lot of women are having trouble conceiving. So this is one of the reasons why we're doing this program is especially before you go in vitro fertilization. And that's like ridiculously expensive. I know in the United States, it's, I don't know, like $20,000. And Sorry, can you, can you just explain that in vitro uh... I didn't catch this, the end of that. In vitro fertilization. Fertilization. Okay, yeah. So, you know, that's when they're going to be fertilizing an egg and placing it inside of you. And hopefully it takes. And, you know, and it may or may not, you know. And it's like here in the U.S., like $20,000 plus or minus, you know. It could be a lot more depending upon what procedures you choose and what you're not. So before you go down that path, which is mostly not covered by insurance, try to resolve your health issues before And hopefully that will resolve some of the problems. But going back to the high blood pressure, you're starting to see food having a huge impact. You know, the animal products and oil, oil itself. I mean, most people think like, oh my God, what about my extra virgin olive oil? Well, I don't care if it was pressed by virgins on the seventh solstice of the seventh month. The virgin, what happens with this oil is it makes your red blood cells extraordinarily sticky. Just Just like when you touch the bottle itself, and you've let, like, let some of the oil drip down on the side of the bottle. Oh my God, you see how sticky that is? So that's exactly what's happening to your red blood cells. So if your red blood cells become sticky, then they can't flow nice, nice through your arteries. And if they can't flow nice, nice through your arteries, uh, Houston, we're going to have a problem. And that's going to raise your blood pressure. So just one simple thing, just getting the oil out of your diet and not cooking with it or eating products that contain oil is it's going to be a huge factor in lowering and reducing your your blood pressure okay now uh, a lot of people on this uh, site also have an issue with salt and um, they want to leave the salt out of out of their diet in some way and i i don't always think they're addressing it correctly that's what i think well how about what's your opinion on that sodium is definitely a factor with hypertension. It's one of the most major factors actually with hypertension. And, and actually you can think about hypertension in terms of the blood vessels themselves, the blood vessels leaving the heart. All of the blood vessels in the body are lined by this, it's called the endothelium. It's a very thin one cell layer. I think about the endothelium as linoleum, very smooth tiles all around lining every blood vessel of your body. Mm-hmm. And what those endothelial cells do is they produce nitric oxide and nitric oxide is a relaxing agent it relaxes and it causes the endothelial walls to be relaxed and to be more malleable to be more flexible and to Mm -hmm. stretch a little bit more and to not break up not break apart you don't want the linoleum to crack and because then more like lipids and fats and inflammatory markers can get underneath and cause a plaque and that's how you get heart disease and atherosclerosis. You want the lining to be not irritated and not inflamed and just smooth. So salt actually reduces nitric oxide production. So salt is going to make your blood vessels stiffer. And when the blood vessels are stiff, just like oil also, reduces something called flow-mediated dilation, the ability of the blood vessels to relax. All oils do this. When they cannot relax, then the, the heart has to pump harder to get blood through, especially when the vessels are narrowed by atherosclerotic plaque. And you can think that, well, I don't have any plaque, right? Because most people think they don't until they have a heart attack. And sometimes their first heart attack is their last because they actually pass away. But it turns out that heart disease starts in the womb. We see some deposits, some fatty, especially fatty deposits and some thickening of the wall of the, of the blood vessels even when the people have miscarried and they're looking at, at aborted fetuses. And by mm-hmm. age 10, we see fatty streaks. And we know from studies about soldiers who are about you know, 18 to 20 from the Korean War that a very large percentage of them already had atherosclerotic plaque. So now you have plaque that's narrowing the lumen. And if the vessels are also stiff, then the heart has to pump harder. And that's the origin of high blood pressure. So you need nitric oxide and you need more nitric oxide. And that's why Dr. Esselstyn, when he does his studies with people and he reverses heart disease, he has them actually doing five extra servings of steamed greens every day. 
Do, mm-hmm. you, do you sometimes do that with people? So, and the reason is because steep greens are a source of nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is what, is what you really need to get back into your body to, to cause the endothelium to be smooth and flexible. And so oils and fats. And you know, some studies show that extra virgin olive oil, you know, it's certainly not as bad as lard, but it's, it's not a health food and we really do not need. It took me a while to give up the oil, but when I did, that was when I really saw the changes. And when I've had clients that have maintained the use of oils, they really have not been able to get off of their medications the way that people who really got off of all oil were able to do. Okay. Well, I know I started off on salt there, and I know... Well, let me jump uh, in on the salt, yeah, too. Yeah, sure. Please. That's what I was going to ask you. Because yeah. I, 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 I had high, very, very high blood pressure. And I'm one of the few, because typically you don't know if you have high blood pressure because they call it the silent killer. But I was one of the few that has, actually, I have high blood pressure headaches when my blood pressure goes up high. And so anytime I would consume salt or if like we went out to a restaurant, because restaurants are notorious for putting a phenomenal amount of salt in there because it's cheap and it's easy to add to the food to make it taste amazing. And then, yes, Deborah, you're right. Then you're going to drink more water because they, you've got a, the salty food. So you're going to be you know, quenching that with liquids. But the salt will then cause the, it, it almost like attaches to the water and you start becoming like bloated. And within your arteries itself, it's putting a lot more pressure on your arteries to be carrying all of this liquid that you've, you've consumed, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, the salt is holding on to it. So it raises it that way in terms of, of the blood volume with per se, but I have seen it. And then I would get headaches. Like we went out to a restaurant here in the United States and it was one of those upscale fast food kind of places. And I went in and got a salad. Okay. And I brought my own dressing. Okay, fine. And then I got a cup, a cup, one cup of black bean soup. And I made sure there was no oils. There was no animal products. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. But I forgot to check the salt. And that one cup had 56% of daily nutritional requirement for salt in that one cup. I never had such a severe blood pressure headache. I mean, it it was awful. And it takes about three days for me to get rid of that extra liquid in my system and to dial down my blood pressure. So it it is very difficult for me to go out to eat. I primarily cook at home unless I know exactly where we're going. And if I do go out, you know, that I know that I, I try and do the best that I can, you know, a salad and I'll bring my own dressing or baked potato or something like that. And then steamed vegetables and I'll do the best I can, but I know that they're going to inadvertently either put oil or salt on, on the food because that's what they do. So, you know, I really try not to, um, so do you think more people are affected by uh, the salt that's included in, uh, in these foods, in these p- foods we wouldn't recommend in the normal, you know, uh, standard American diet than the, the problem from using a salt cellar, for instance? Yeah, for sure. Oh. Okay. Okay. So when, when people are looking, let's get back to uh, women who uh, uh, want to get uh, pregnant. They want to want to prepare themselves for pregnancy. What are some of the things they, uh, they should be doing, should, should be thinking about them doing? Well, let me, before, we, before we jump into that question, I just want to okay. say we have a free giveaway. If you go to pregnantready.net or pregnantready.com, you can sign up and get, we have the top three things that we think that you need to address before you want to get your body pregnant ready, or if you're having trouble conceiving, these are the top three things that you need to focus on and we're giving that away free because we just want to help. I mean, that's our biggest goal is we want to help see healthy babies. We want to see healthy women. And that's why we created this program. So uh, pregnantready.net or pregnantready.com, either one. But So how about, let me ask this question then. Uh, a guy, a guy, uh, you know, is, is part of this deal usually. No, always, 100% of the time is always <laughs> part of it. Yeah. Yes. Is it... Is, are the same steps that you're suggesting in three things you can do to get pregnant ready, would, would, they, would they work or would they be as positive, would they be a positive thing for guys to do as well? I can speak to that. Absolutely. The endocrine disrupting chemicals that we're exposed to are going to affect the, the man as well and affect his sperm as well. And, and more than that, also, not only the heat 
from your laptop and the heat from, you know, if you're doing it, but heat from sitting in hot tubs, for example, but, mm -hmm. but heat affects the sperm, but uh, in, a, in a negative way, but also the radiation from your cell phone, if you tend to keep your cell phone in your pocket, the sperm, the DNA in the sperm is very, is very uh, delicate and very, and uh, very prone to damage. And so you really, if you're going to try to be getting somebody pregnant, then mm -hmm. you want to keep the laptops off your lap. You want to take the, the cell phone out of your pocket and, and get away from these endocrine disrupting chemicals as well. Also, blood pressure medications can affect sperm also. So uh, there, there's no question that this can be healthy. Not only that, I mean, if you want to be supportive of your spouse who's going to be eating a plant-based diet, then you want to get on board too, right? So the whole family, and you can be raising your kids on a plant-based diet, and then both of you know, as both of you feel the difference and know what's possible and know that this is the right thing for your child. So if a woman is doing it and her spouse is just digging in his heels and he's saying, well, I'm going to eat meat. I think that can be, I think that can be a challenge for yeah. somebody. So I think it's important. Uh, I think it's important to do this as a, as a family, but we're not, we're not coaching men specifically. We are, we are going to be coaching women. Okay. So uh, you mentioned something, something in there that I think uh, almost every single person who is on this, uh, on this site um, has an interest in, and that is med blood pressure medications. So anyone who's been on blood pressure medication, uh, let me say, change it, almost everyone who's been on blood pressure medication for any length of time has what is often known as a side effect. I don't think it's a side effect. I think it's an effect, full stop. So what type of uh, things should be people who are on medication, who have high blood pressure, women looking to get pregnant, what, sh what should they be worried about, concerned about? What should they do with, it, with medication, where medication is concerned? Okay, so if a woman is on, has hypertension, but she wants to get pregnant, and she is taking a medication, she has to make sure that it's not an ACE inhibitor an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. The, the medications that are safer in pregnancy for women are the, cal are the calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, but even more people use labetalol, a beta blocker. Now it's actually very different for men because for men, beta blockers and ACE inhibitors are worse for male fertility. Calcium channel blockers are actually safer. So for both calcium channel blockers for women, beta blockers for men, not. So one would be just get onto something safer. But I would recommend diet and lifestyle changes because we know that if you can get off of meat and add more vegetables, more fruit, more whole grains, add some ground, add ground flax, add a hibiscus tea, that you can probably reduce and maybe even get off of your medications. You need to do it with a physician watching you. And you need to be able to take your blood pressure and know how to take your blood pressure properly at home. Because very quickly, if you do these things, if you eat a plant-based diet with, with, and eliminate the salt and eliminate the oil yeah. and eliminate the sugars, your blood pressure will, can plummet. It can mm -hmm. plummet very quickly. It depends. You know, when you lose weight, your blood pressure comes down. And, and this is the diet that will help you to lose weight. So uh, you know, we know when people fast, when people go on water-only fast, they're immediately taken off their blood pressure medication. They don't wean off. They're immediately taken off their blood pressure medication. Mm -hmm. So it's the food that's keeping your blood pressure up. If you eliminate the kind of food that raises your blood pressure, especially things like meat, we know, we've done studies, the Adventist, the Adventist 2 Health Study looked at people eating different types of diet, everything from the omnivore to the flexitarian to the vegetarian to the pescatarian, yeah. and then the vegan. There was a stepwise reduction in blood pressure, stepwise reduction in the incidence of high blood pressure, the incidence of heart disease, the incidence of diabetes, of type 2 diabetes, the incidence of cancer. It's all the same. We're much lower. This is of obesity. The only group that had a normal BMI, less than 25, were the vegans. So there's a 75% lower incidence of hypertension when in the vegans compared to the meat eaters. 75% less. I'm not saying that you can never find a vegan with high blood pressure because there are some that are just sort of genetic and uh, they have to do with, with your kidneys and you just, it, it, maybe what your parents ate, maybe what your grandparents ate, but, but most of the time it's reversible with diet. So like, I think what, what, what Jean said, it's a choice. Having high blood pressure may be a choice. It may be a choice that you didn't make yourself. So that's the problem. That's the problem. Cause it starts, cause we know it all starts in the womb. It's what your mother ate. It's what your grandmother ate. It's what you were fed as a child. 
it's your gut bacteria too. It's all, it, it's, it's, as we said, it's not your fault, but it's that, but it is your responsibility. Okay. I'll jump in because I just looking at it from a global perspective. I know, I know Deborah, you get it more in medical, but just think about this. Anything that you put in or on your body, your body has to deal with. It has to. And so these medications, these medications were designed for short term, not to be on them for 10 or 15 years. They were designed short term so that you can hopefully deal with it because they're not going to fix the high blood pressure. They're not. What they're going to do is help reduce the flow of, you know, within the, the pressure inside, but that's short term, very short term. So you need to address it with what is the cause? What is the underlying cause of the high blood pressure? And then get off of the medications because your body shouldn't be having to deal with these chemicals. Yeah, one of the um, uh, things I ask, I ask people to ask their doctor when they first put on medication is, okay, that's fine. I need to take these, these pills. How long will I be taking them, doc? And quite often, straight away, they get the answer. Many, many people on this site, well, I'll be taking them for life now. Yeah. I mean, that can't be the right way, can it? No. Well, if you don't address the underlying condition, the obesity, the obesity and the bad food, then yes, but the issue is if you don't, you'll, yes, your blood pressure will come down. But the atherosclerosis, the, the process of atherosclerotic changes, that's still going on if you're continuing to eat the way you're eating. And, mm -hmm. and if you're obese, you can still develop diet. You will most likely develop insulin resistance and diabetes and destroy your kidneys and cause blindness and vas microvascular disease and may need amputations. So, you know, just taking a blood pressure pill is not going to change that, right? It just isn't. It's not going to keep you from getting diabetes, I don't believe. If you're sure. Dr. Schumacher. We have Yasmin Starr. Welcome, Yasmin. They said your cholesterol was 189 and you're worried, as you should be. You need to get your cholesterol. Your cholesterol should be down below 180 or 100, excuse me, 150. And so that's what we want to get it to. And I have seen people change, you know, and I know Gareth, you've seen them change. I know Deborah, you've seen them change. You know, as soon as you switch to a whole food plant based diet, I've seen people in like three weeks. I had one, one customer, one client who changed. His cholesterol was 279. Okay. And in three weeks, just by changing to a whole food plant based diet, he, his cholesterol went to 99 in three weeks, okay? So immediately the doctor took him off. He was on, on uh, cholesterol drugs. So they immediately took him off of that because he didn't need it anymore because his cholesterol had gotten down. You want to definitely get off the cholesterol. Deborah, I know you're, gonna, you're just like, God, I gotta jump in, I gotta jump in, go girl. Well, no, well, I know that when some people say that their cholesterol is 180 and we don't really know this woman, Jasmine, she may already be on a fully whole food plant-based diet with no salt, oil, sugar. And I have heard from people, you know, a lot of this is genetics. What your actual number is is set by genetics. Whether it goes up or down has to do with saturated fat and to a lesser extent, dietary cholesterol, but mostly saturated fat. And there's an equation, the Hegstead equation, which actually determines what kind of a change in your, in your LDL cholesterol you can see when you reduce saturated fat or, or add it. But I've heard Esselstyn talk to people and say, if you're already eating a completely whole food plant-based diet or whole plant food diet with no added salt, oil, sugar. And the best you can do is 180 or if your LDLs are, you know, 90 or 100, um, 90, let's say, we like them to be around 70, but let's just say they're 90. He, he wouldn't recommend medication and, he, and he, wouldn't, he wouldn't stress about it. Sometimes you just, so I don't know whether Jasmine's already on, you know, a fully plant-based diet. She's saying, I can't get it down any lower. I'm doing the best I can. Or if she's saying, you know, I'm, I'm eating this and that, and, and that's what it is. Because if, you're, if, you are, if there are changes that could be made, then improve your diet. Make it as good as it can be. Because according, it was the Framingham Heart Study that showed that uh, when, you, when your total cholesterol was less than 150, when your LDLs were around 70, you were considered heart attack proof. So if they're higher than that, then you could try to get them down lower. But if you're doing everything right and it still won't budge, I would not stress in, unless it's very, unless it's quite high. Well, Laura ne Peter Neves says, asks a question. Hi, Laura. Uh, how do you raise your good cholesterol? Mine is a little low. Well, exercise raises your good cholesterol. But again, again, what's most important for atherosclerosis and for heart disease and for the risk of heart attack is your LDL cholesterol. So when you see plant-based people and their total cholesterol is 
you know, 130, their L and their HDLs are, you know, lower, you know, 30s or something. That doesn't matter. You don't need a lot of HDL. So it, what HDL cholesterol does is it's like a scavenger. It's like a little garbage truck. It goes around to your blood vessels and it picks up the, 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 LD, the cholesterol, the bad plaque in the cholesterol, and it takes it back to your liver so it gets rid of the bad. But what's worse, so if you have a lot of cholesterol, you need a lot of HDLs. And we used to think, I remember for many, many years, we did the ratio of the total cholesterol divided by the HDL, and that gave you a risk of heart disease. But now that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the LDL cholesterol because that is the most atherogenic. And it doesn't matter if it's the small, the small hard or the big fluffy, it doesn't matter. LDL cholesterol is what, is what counts. So you want your LDL, if you want to be heart attack proof, you really want to get your LDL cholesterol down. But you can raise your HDL cholesterol um, with aerobic exercise. Okay, well, Yasmin came back and said, is 189 heart attack? I'm, I'm assuming she means like, is, are you prone for that, for a heart attack? To be considered heart attack proof, technically you need your HDL, your HDL is around 60, 70, and you want your total cholesterol less than 150 because they never saw in the Framingham Heart Study, which was looking at thousands and thousands of people for many, many years, they did not see a heart attack when people had those kinds of numbers. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is if your numbers are higher than that, just make sure that you're doing everything you can diet-wise to, to keep your risk of atherosclerosis low. You, I don't know if you're eating still some coconut oil. Coconut oil raised oh. my cholesterol and my LDLs and went off. I know, but a lot of people, el um, coconut oil is extremely popular right now. And it's great, you know, I guess on your skin, but I would not ingest it because, and they'll say, well, it raises your HDLs. Well, it really raises your LDLs. And my LDLs went from 120 to 60. And all I did was stop roasting my vegetables in coconut oil. And I learned how to roast them on parchment without oil. So I made that one little switch and my LDLs dropped. Yeah. And I kept them down. So, um, Jasmine, are you? Do you think there are sources of saturated fat in your diet that you could eliminate? That's all. You know, try it for a month. Just try looking. If you're eating a package, something that has um, an ingredient list, then look to see that there's very little or no saturated fat, and load up on whole plant foods. And oh, and the other thing that can get your blood pressure down, I believe it's your blood pressure. Oh, I think it was cholesterol. For Braz uh, yeah, for, um, for you, Jasmine, uh, four Brazil nuts a month is supposed to really lower your cholesterol. And actually, it stays down for a little bit, too. And you can look that up on Michael Greger's website, nutritionfacts.org. But I was just reviewing, and, I remember, and that's what he said. Now, normally for selenium, which is an important micronutrient, we only recommend one Brazil nut a, a week. You don't want to take one every day. It's too much. But... If you are interested in lowering your cholesterol, then maybe four at one time. So um, four Brazil nuts a month and then get your cholesterol checked and see if it's lower. Do you know, um, four Brazil nuts a month, anyone can, who, can do, who can do that deserves to have a healthy body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because I'm like, we'd be chowing those down. I cannot have nuts, you know, loose in the house or bags of them because I will pop those babies like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you think when um, years ago, uh, when I was growing up, we had them at Christmas. We had them come in their, in their shells, of course. You had to crack them open. Yeah. And four in a whole afternoon was such a pain. So, but now, you know, we can buy a packet of them and chow down 10, yeah. 20, 30 of them in, in next to no time. So, yeah, big difference than, uh, than when I grew up. Right. Okay, so um, getting yourself pregnant ready and um, a, a message, a final message you'd like to to give out to anyone uh, who's, who's getting ready to get pregnant, apart from going to uh, pregnantready.net or .com and picking up their, their three things, the most important things they can do. What, what other message would you like to give to people out there? I would like to see people get to a healthy weight. It will improve your fertility and reduce the risk of chronic disease in your baby later on and improve the chances that you'll have a healthy pregnancy without complications like hypertension in pregnancy, diabetes in pregnancy, and needing a C-section and an induction and all of that. So get to a healthy weight because that is, that is very important. And the way to get to a healthy weight is to eat this whole food plant-based diet with no salt, oil, sugar, and that will at the same time reduce your blood pressure, get your cholesterol down. And the other piece is about organic, non-GMO, and avoiding toxins. 
because these endocrine disrupting chemicals, the, the parabens and the phthalates and the PFAS and the uh, BPA, dioxins, these the kind of xenoestrogens and endocrine disrupting chemicals, these are very dangerous to your fetus and you want to get rid of them. For mercury, I had mercury poisoning actually twice. Mercury takes a long time to get out of your body, but some of these persistent organic pollutants, they can take years. So that's why I really want to reach women earlier. You don't want babies to come out already sort of pre-poisoned. It's ridiculous. Think, I mean, you, you, the glyphosate is, in, is a neurotoxin, right? And, and we're already finding glyphosate, which is, you know, what's in GMO soy mm -hmm. and corn and and that's what they feed animals too. So of course it's in the animal products, but they're already finding glyphosate in the umbilical cords of babies in the blood that comes from the umbilical cords. So, and we find, oh, we still find DDT in breast milk. This stuff is really persistent in the environment. So whatever you can look and, and buy organic and try to reduce the toxin load before you get pregnant, that will help to give you a healthier baby, smarter baby, healthier wow. baby. Mm. Well, I just wanted to point out, Laura, you're already starting a DASH diet. Well done to you. And, and I'm so glad your numbers are looking so much better. And it, it's amazing. When you change the food, and if you want to take it to the next level, I mean, seriously, go to the next level and just do whole food plant-based. Then you're going to see even more changes. And it's amazing. And this is what we want to do in our program is we want to help women because we want to get the toxins out because I am just so, that is my background. My background's chemistry. And I, the, we've been exposed to since World War II an additional 10,000 chemicals. You know, in Europe, it's a little bit different. They have what's called the precautionary principle. And mm -hmm. you have to prove that whatever you're going to be selling or any products or whatever is not going to be harmful to the, to the person. Whereas here in the United States, there is nothing. There is no regula zero regulation. There's nothing. And so, you, you know, and I grew up very naive that, you know, if you see something on a shelf that, you know, in a grocery store or a pharmacy or whatever, that it's been approved by somebody. Well, no, it's not. There is no regulation. They can put anything they want in there. And like chemicals, like, for example, like parabens. Parabens, parabens are endocrine disruptors. And it's going to have some impact on your reproductive system. Hello? And so it, and they're bioaccumulative. They're staying in your body. They stay, there's two, okay, this is the chemistry part of me coming out, the, the teacher. Okay, there's two types of general types of chemicals, fat-soluble, water-soluble. If it's water-soluble, you're peeing it out, okay? If it's fat-soluble, hey, guess what? It's going into your fat cells right away because that's how your body deals with it. It's kind of almost like an oyster where you have, like the oyster gets a little grain of sand in there and then starts putting this, coating around that grain of sand so it's not an irritant well that's what your body does with fat okay and so it puts they become like toxic dumps so we're seeing the kids getting in and, and deborah mentioned mercury okay mercury is huge and not only just mercury but all the other metals aluminum you know iron copper zinc you know and and yeah huge issues with those so you've got to be careful with that. You want to make sure that you've got these levels going into pregnancy correct because the baby, whatever your toxic level is when you conceive, that's what the baby's going to be developing in. Kind of this toxic swamp, you know, that you're developing it. And I see this direct relationship in the classroom, direct. So that's why we want to help women to clean out these toxins, to get the right nutrients into their bodies Make sure that they're exercising because I'm telling you, they don't call it labor for nothing, okay? And it, it's, it's a hard one. And I remember absolutely being so exhausted after labor. I mean, oh my God. I mean, and you can't sleep because you got this newborn coming into your life. So sleep becomes a premium, you know, after, after birth. So your body has to be ready because you're going through so many changes. I know, Deborah, you're like, I got to jump in. I got to jump in. Go, girl. No, no, that was great. I, you were mentioning zinc, and so it just got, it got me thinking about one also positive thing that we're going to be doing in this program. It's not all negative, and it's not all taking away. It's really also about managing expertly the micronutrients and the macronutrients that you need to create a healthy baby. I don't want people going out there thinking, well, I can just be vegan and, and, um, and have a healthy baby, because you, there actually are specific needs for specific nutrients that have to be covered. And even though the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics put out a position statement saying that well-planned vegetarian and vegan diets are appropriate for all stages of life, including pregnancy and lactation and, and for athletes and for older folks, but in a, 
but it has to be well planned, meaning that certain nutrients have to be added back. You need to take your folate before you get pregnant uh, to prevent a neural tube defect. You need to now, folic acid also in addition to well, and that's, where the, that's what we talk about in our program exactly. is this nutrition. So, right. So I don't it's, want to, it's a very important part of it is to make sure that yep. we're all covered. The calcium and the iodine and the, and the, and the amount of iron and all of that and right. the protein needs. So, so it's not just about eliminating toxins. It's also about really making your diet excellent in every way, nutritionally excellent for an upcoming pregnancy. Right. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the message, eh? the diet. It's for, for women who are looking to get uh, pregnant and they want the best for themselves and their baby in the future. You've got to get to pregnantready.net, pregnantready.com and pick up your, uh, the best advice from, from these two ladies, from these two doctors, extremely experienced in this area. And with, I'm sure you can tell with a heart, uh, that they really want to, they really want to help young uh, young women out there uh, who have a, have the, not have a, a bad pregnancy, have a good good experience, and change things for the future. It's been super. Uh, well, I, talking I know to we both didn't get you. to all of the questions that we had people write in already, so I don't know. Maybe we could do this again. I've had enjoyed this. Yes, absolutely. I love. I was just going to say that you know anyone who, who wants to write in uh, uh, questions that didn't get answered now, then absolutely we could. Uh, if you you guys are happy, are very happy to have you back on, and we'll see about the res about the response. Uh, you know, most people will be watching this, I guess, on a on a replay on the site. It'll be posted on the site, and uh, we'll see what the what the response is. And if enough of you out there, enough of you out there, want to hear again from uh, these two doctors, if you have the if you have the questions for them, we'll absolutely do this again. Thank you very much, both of you, for taking time out today to share your knowledge with us and tell us about the pregnancyadvantage.net. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you so much. This was such an honor and a pleasure to meet you and to be with you today. Thank you. Thanks well, Gareth, you. thank you so much. Keep up the great job in the, you know, your high blood pressure group because it's so important. So keep up the great job and coaching and helping people to reduce their high blood pressures. You have a no meds method, so keep yeah, it up. We're all doing our bit, aren't we? We're all doing right. our bit for, to get the, the, the power of the plant-based diet and exactly what it can do for so many people out there and for the world. Right. Yep. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.